yo slapping guys it's tony aka t slaps here and we are here with our week one team builder versus coach kurt aka the walt disney landerus uh who we have known in the community for seven years literally almost since the beginning i think there's only like one or two leagues i was in prior to meeting him and i mean we've been in the community since uh he's definitely gotten a lot better than i have over the years so i'm not gonna lie and this is also my first sword and shield Wi-Fi league. Um, so we have our work cut out for us this week. I decided I did want to do team builders in this league. I, I'm putting a lot of time into my prep. Even though sword and shield is about to end. Um, and we're going to get you know Scarlet and Violet. I do want to put a lot of prep and a lot of work into this league here. And um, I put a lot of effort into prepping. And I'm going to hopefully try to keep that up each and every week. So... Without further ado, you can already see the team that we built right here, which six we decided to bring. Of course, if you did not see our quote-unquote draft analysis, that's going to be in the description below along with the NCP playlist where you can watch all the videos throughout the weeks, all the drafts and or all the team builders and all the battles that we play, as well as all the other coaches are down there as well if you want to go check out some other NCP content creators. Um, anyways, without further ado, we're going to just hop into this. You can see my opponent's team right here with the Mew, Rillaboom, Zygarde, Metagross, Moltres, Galar, Lycanroc, Dusk, Heracross, Weezing, Blastoise, Wigglytuff, and Pikachu. Whereas we are down here, we have Necrozma, Weavile, Melmetal, Mandibuzz, Sylvalia, Aromatisse, Gastrodon, Rotomo, Nihilio, and Magmortar. Now, with this today, um, there was a lot that I had to consider going into this for one. I don't know a lot of the moves, and I don't know a lot of what they do. And with him having Mew, he has so many options of what he can do with that thing. Rillaboom, of course, very, very scary. And Zygarde, I mean, those top three mods just alone are probably the best top three picks, I think, out of any team here throughout. Uh, I mean, just throughout. I mean, I'm really looking right now. And I think, in my opinion, that's one of the, if not the best top three picks uh, for a draft, like, in this entire roster. Kurt always drafts well, in my opinion. And... So, I mean, it's crazy to see. And the Moltres, uh, Gower is very scary. Lycanroc, Dusk, Heracross, Weezing. Blastoise with the Smash opportunity. Wigglytuff. I think I skipped over the Metagross, but Metagross is up there as well. And Pikachu, which Pikachu is actually extremely scary. Me and Kurt have been talking all over uh, since, you know, the draft was completed. And since we found out that we played week one. The Pikachu really does have, um, it really does run through my team. And so that's something I need to be concerned about. So when it comes to what we decided to bring to counteract that, we decided first off, I thought Magmortar looked amazing. Uh, we got Krakatawa here, our Magmortar Choice Scarf with the Flame Body. He doesn't really have anything to put us to sleep, so I'm not really too worried about that. Uh, so we got Choice Scarf here, Lava Plume, Fire Blast, Focus Blast, and Teleport. I really thought that those... Uh, I only really needed two moves, Focus Blast and a Fire Coverage. So I... Uh, I decided to bring Fire Blast, that's the strongest hitting fire type move I get. I was hoping for Eruption, but unfortunately somehow Magmortar does not learn Eruption, which is very unfortunate. Um, so we got level, or we got Fire Blast there, the, heart, the hardest hitting Fire Blast special move we get. And Focus Blast hits pretty well for what we need to hit neutrally, like the Zygarde it hits pretty well. And the Blast Choice hits pretty well. I didn't want to bring Thunderbolt because then obviously he just switches into Zygarde pretty freely on that. Uh, so I didn't want to bring it. Lava Plume was in case we don't want to, want to risk the Fire Blast miss. And part of my game plan is really getting status and burns on everything throughout his team to uh, dwindle them down. I really wanted to bring Hazards, however, I only have two Hazard Setters on my team. One of which being the Necrozma you see right there, and the second one being Nihilio. And I really wanted to fit under the team, but with him having Rillaboom, which just can Oka me with Grassy Glide, the the Zygarde being there, the Metagross, the the Lycanroc Dusk out speeding and just hitting it, taking a ton, it just was not the matchup for Nihilio, which is unfortunate because Toxic Spikes or Stealth Rocks both looked amazing versus Kurt's team. Um, so maybe we'll have to make a pickup to kind of help with that later if we do play him again. Um, and then teleport, that could be really, really cool. I didn't really have a fourth move I wanted to bring, but I thought teleport could be a smart bring, potentially. I do have to remember, of course, that teleport is negative priority, so I really do just have to do that banked off him switching, if I know 100% he's going to switch out. And I was able to run modest on this 129 speed, 
What is that speed creeping? That is speed creeping his Blastoise, um, as a Blastoise speed creep that I predict to bring. I'm not going to go too much more into depth with that, um, just in case, but that's kind of what I thought about that. I, I mean, I looked, I wrote down, like, what every Mon could really reach, where I think he might speed creep to, depending on his sets, and I think this is based off a certain, mag uh, a certain Blastoise set. But on top of that, with the Scarfed out speed, it's, um, a Lycan Rock Dusk beat, uh, speed creep, so I thought this looked fine. Um, next we got Melmetal with the protective pads, Iron Fist with double iron bash, Ice Punch, Thunder Punch, and High Horse Power. Now, um, with this set, I mean, it's pretty self explanatory. Melmetal is pretty, um, I mean, it really just speaks for itself when it comes to its attack stat. Really just high physically defensive one, and by high physically offensive mon, but where it lacks is of course the speed and special defense. Um, I have enough speed depth in there to lift two non-invested flamethrowers from Mew after spikes in case he brings spikes Mew, or in case maybe I get like, I don't know, I lose my protective pad somehow and I take a bit of chip from Rocky Helmet because I do expect the Rocky Helmet on at least like two mons, definitely Blastoise for sure. Um, I don't know, you can slap it on anything else on his team to be honest, like the Metagross or like the Weezing if he decides to bring that. Um, speaking of which, I think literally any single one on this roster, minus maybe a little Wigglytuff, could come. I think, and I wouldn't be surprised if Chris and I managed to find a way to make that Wigglytuff come, uh, onto the squad. But I think literally everything has a chance. I mean, Rillaboom, Grassy God looks amazing. Mew can literally do anything. Zygarde setup looks scary. Metagross, uh, to stop things like my Necrozma, and my Aromatisse, and things like that looks good. Moltres Galar, I'm very, very scared for. And the Lycanroc Dusk, I am scared of both of those mods tremendously. As long as we only see one, I'd be happy. Heracross just hits very, very hard. Um, and of course, that outspeed my Melmetal and pressures it pretty heavily. So I could also see that. Weezing, I think, and Blastoise are both good defensive Rocky Helmet things to get chip onto my Melmetal if I'm not bringing protective pads. And like I said, Pikachu just actually like genuinely looks really good against my team. Um, so that's just something I need to worry about. The double iron bash obviously for our main stab, ice punch to hit that Zygarde, thunder punch to hit that Blastoise, and high horse power to hit the Metagross. Um, and that's about that. Um, but as you'll see with Aromatisse, I am running Trick Room on this squad. And so something I do need to keep in mind is that if I double iron bash into his Blastoise and I see that I don't to a KO, I have to Ice Punch on the... I have to Ice Punch on the Zygarde coming in. Well, depending on if Trick Room comes up, I don't know how... I don't want to let uh, Zygarde coming in for free if uh, that's an opportunity. I don't want Zygarde to get in for free. Um... So I don't know how, how about that statement, actually. It really just depends. I just need to be careful about letting that Zygarde in, letting anything in on free on my Melmetal, as he, like, predicts, or anything like that. So I really just need to get Blastoise just chipped down enough to where I can just double Iron Bash only against it. I don't have to worry about having a quick Thunder Punch against him. Um, so next we got the Aromatisse with a Wiki Berry, which is one of those Super Berries. Room Blast, Psychic, Disable, and Trick Room. Uh, an offensive Aromatisse, I thought it looked really nice. But I may need a Aromatisse to switch into a couple of moves and take the hits. Especially against that uh, Galar Moltres. So that's why I'm running a bit more of a bulky set. Not just straight up like Life Orb Nasty Plot or anything like that. I really wanted to bring Calm Miner Nasty Plot. Because I do think the mule would come in on Aromatisse and that'd be a problem. Um, but this is fine. Uh, Moonblast Psychic Disable and Trick Room. Disable I think could be nice for one. Stopping the Mew from being able to recover up on me. If he does have that. It could help with the Grassy Glide from Rillaboom and disabling that. What else could it disable realistically? I mean, it could disable... I don't know. It could disable a number of things, <laughs> depending on how I play it. So, that's why I'm running Disable there. And then Trick Room for the Aromatisse, for my Necrozma, and for my Melmetal. I think that's going to throw off Kurt a lot, and I hope... And I really do hope that we can take advantage of that against him. Um, next, we got Amanda Buzz here, just physically defensive mainly. To, uh, it soft checks Rillaboom and Zygarde. It beats the Metagross. I have enough investment to take three Thunderbolts from no investment Mew. And it just meant to be my Defogger across my team. Next, we have a uh, 
we'll get into the Krogman last, actually. Um, next, we got a Spit Death Rotom Heat. Meant to soft check the Moltres uh, Galar. And it checks Pikachu, because, like I said, Pikachu actually does go crazy against my team. And then just Thunderbolt, Leaf Storm, Will O Wisp, and Pain Split. Just against his team. Um, like I said, I really want to get Willow off here, and then I have uh, Lava Plume with Magmortar, just meant to chip down his team, hopefully. And lastly, we got our Necrozma set here. Now, our Necrozma is a very, very particular set. So, it underspeeds Weezing, a certain Weezing speed creep that I have in mind um, for him to be bringing against my team. Uh, so, underspeeds that inside of Trick Room so that then we'd outspeed. Um, but then if we're, um, if Trick Room is gone and we set up with a TD, then at plus one we outspeed a modest Blastoise, and then at plus two we outspeed any of his team out, uh, barring any Scarfers. And at plus three completely, we sweep just throughout his team, like we Oko everything. We don't have to worry about the Willow Chip. But that's really what the Willow Chip is for, to either set up for a Necrozma sweep or set up for a Momental just cleaning up late game. The only problem with the Necrozma set, as you can tell, is that it gets completely walled by a Galar Moltres. But I did want to bring Moonlight in case I needed to take some hits with Necrozma, and in case I needed Moonlight up against something setting up or like stalling out in front of me. I'm running Lumberry in case the Mew wants to try to Toxic me or Thunder Wave me uh, or anything on his team wants to status me. So that's kind of why I'm running that. And so yeah, so I have a Necrozma that can hopefully operate in and outside of Trick Room, and I'm hoping that throws off Kurt enough that I'm bringing very, very soft Trick Room with just Momento and Aromatisse, really, but I have Necrozma that can still operate within Trick Room if I need it to, and on top of that, I, of course, have my uh, Scarf Bank Mortar, which I think will hopefully throw him off just enough. Um, that's really what I'm going for here. So my game plan, like I said, just to status down everything against his team, I need to take down that Galar Moltres, or at least get it chipped down very, very much for my Necrozma to hopefully sweep late game. Um, and I also need to kind of pay attention to what I can set up on against him. Maybe the Mew, depending on what kind of Mew set he is. Uh, maybe the Metagross, the, the Weezing, the Blastoise. Maybe the Pikachu. I don't know what my damage cuck looks like against Pikachu. But, you know, just looking into things like that. And like I said, I mean, it's really going to be a lot of me scouting out sets. I think he has so many different options you can run with this week against my team. And it's just going to be a matter of me. Can I figure out what his plan is before it's too late, before my team gets too windowed down against him? Uh, but anyways, that's going to be the end of the draft analysis. I think this, sh or not draft analysis, this team builder. Uh, we should have the battle going up the next day. Um, so these should go up on Thursday, and then on Friday will be NCP battles. Of course, if you did enjoy, make sure that like button, and so of course, subscribe. I don't know how many people are doing team builders i know team builders have kind of faded out of the draft community but i do like i said i do put a lot of thought into the prep for this season and so i'm hoping that uh i get some pointers out from that because i really am not going to be prepping a lot with other people because a lot of my teams uh, or a lot of my friends that i do prep with are in this league um i think i think i play d-ray um who else do i play um, obviously I play Kurt. I play Amel. Okay, so I think it's actually just them three. I think I don't play anyone else. I think I play Sally. I play... Oh, okay, let me think. I play Sally, so that's one. I play T-Bro, that's two. I play Kurt. Um, that's three, but that's one friend that I'm not counting. Amel is another friend, so that's four matches. I know I play Keegan. That's five. Um... I play Liv, um, that's 6, I think I play Dr. Slacking, that's 7, and then I think Joe Deflamin, 8, and then Pat Mac is 9, I don't think I play Sally, I think I counted Sally, I don't play Sally, uh, now that I think about it. So really I only play like 2 other people, I only play Emil and D-Ray uh, for a friend, so I actually can't get a bit of help. I really am hopping off topic right now. I really should be wrapping up this team builder. Um, so I'm going to do that right now. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Of course, like I said, the draft analysis is down in the playlist below. If you did enjoy, make sure that like button. And of course, subscribe. And I'll see you guys tomorrow with the battle. Alright, thank you guys so much for watching.